As you know, we cannot be certain of the outcome of random events, and the most we can usually say is what laws of probability will tell us to expect. Okay, and this can be quantified in the following way. Suppose that an experiment has n outcomes, and there are probabilities associated with each of these outcomes. So we have P1, P2, P3, on out to Pn. And furthermore, we'll assume that each outcome has associated with it a numerical value, V1, V2, V3, and so on out to Vn. Then the expected value of the experiment is defined to be the sum of the products pairwise of these values and probabilities. So we have P1 V1 plus P2 V2 and so on out to Pn Vn. Now some of you will say, well, uh, some experiments don't have numerical values. For example, when you flip a coin, what you get is not a numerical value but a head or a tail. Uh, but this is easily remedied because we can always assign a numerical value uh, no matter what the experiment is. So for example with the coin flipping experiment we could assign a value of 1 for a head and a value of 0 for tails. Okay, so let's expand on this idea and do an example involving coins. Suppose that we uh, flip four coins and we want to find the expected number of heads. Okay, so what we're going to get in an experiment like this, again we don't get a numerical value, we're going to get a uh, set of head and tail results. So we're going to get outcomes such as TTTT, HTTT, THTT, and so on, where uh, in order these represent the outcomes of the first coin, the second coin, the third coin, and the fourth coin. And of course it's easy enough to count up the number of heads that's in these uh, various outcomes. Okay, now how many outcomes are there? Well, for each coin there are two possibilities, head and tail. And as you know by now, the, the way that we get the total number of possible outcomes is to multiply. So we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 or 16 possible outcomes, and these are all equally likely. Okay, so next we need to work out uh, the number of outcomes for each number of head there are. Okay, so let's see, for number of heads. It's possible to have zero heads in only one way, namely all tails. Okay, so a count of this gives one outcome. Number of outcomes one. Okay, for one head it's clear that there are four possible outcomes because we're going to have either the first coin is a head and the others are tails or the second coin is a head 
or the third coin is ahead, or the fourth coin is ahead. Now there's four of these. And let's skip on down to three heads. And here again, there are four outcomes because, again, any one of the coins could be a tail. So there's four there. And then for all four heads, obviously there's only one way that can happen, namely H, 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 H. And so this gives us a total of 10 outcomes. We know there's 16 altogether, so that means for two heads there must be six outcomes. Okay, and those six are H, T, T, H, H, T, H, T, H, H, T, 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 H, T, H, T, H, H, T, and T, T, H, H. Okay, so that gives us a total of 16, which that's what we knew would be the case. Okay, so then to find the expected number of heads, we need to multiply the number of heads by the probability uh, in each case. So we have 0 times 1 out of 16, because there's one possibility for 0 heads, and then plus 1 times 4 out of 16, because there's 4 of those, and then plus 2 times 6 out of 16, because there's 6 of those, plus 3 times 4 out of 16, and plus 4 times 1 out of 16. Okay, so that gives us uh, 1 16th times 0 plus 4 plus 12 plus 12 plus 4. And the answer is 2.